Good morning. We had a nice night and it did do a slow, kind of heavy sprinkle all night. But I do think the roads probably would have been okay. But anyway, we have left this little rural farming area. We're still on their very nice concrete roads. It will not be long till we return to the chattery gravel roads and we are northbound to our next destination. All right, we've been driving for about an hour and a half this morning. We've continued to be on these rattle trap roads. And now I think this section might actually be the worst that we've been on this morning because the whole roads are just covered with potholes. No way to avoid them. And the side of the roads are soft, kind of like a mushy gravel. So you can't go around. You just got to hit them. But it has been stunningly beautiful and everything is turning more and more green. But we think we are 99% sure that we are probably about 10 miles from hitting paved roads where this main road in Chile finally will turn to pavement. And I am going to get out and do a happy dance on the pavement in the wind and the cold. It deserves it. What do you think, Kurt? Terra Terra Astral. <laughs> Maybe Kurt will do a happy dance too. We'll see. Carretera Austral. Possibly we have made it through the gravel roads. We see pavement. And Snow promised she was going to do a dance. So here she goes. <laughs> she's going to do a jig. Let's see what she's got. Oh! <laughs> she almost took a spill twice. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> yeah, G and Banner are gonna do a little dance too. They don't like those roads. Pavement! It's over, kitties! It's the over. wind almost blew you over twice. <laughs> Cerro Castillo. I've got a climb coming up, guys, and it's gonna happen right there. We are almost to our next campsite, but in the next video, Kurt will be taking you up to get a closer look at those pretty peaks up there. You'll learn a little bit more about that later. But it is windy. I don't know if y'all can see, but down there, it's literally blowing the water and making a mist. All right back on the road y'all see this more in the next video it is super super windy here and uh, we're in a little cut and snow <laughs> is bringing the laundry to this little lavenderia but you can see it's just kind of somebody's house a little blue house tin building and they have a door for lavenderia but uh snow knocked on the door and they came out looks like they're gonna have it done by tomorrow two big loads that's how we do it Oh, we got new sheets, clean sheets coming too. So this right here is Cerro Castilla. And most of you probably haven't heard of it because it's not one of the famous peaks down here in the Patagonia. But we are on the Carretera Austral. And there are a lot of beautiful spots as you snake your way up through this mountain range. And Cerro Castilla is one on most people's list if they do the Carretera Astral. This is gonna be an amazing hike. I'm standing here the night before staring up at the mountain as I often do just anticipating the big walk. Now I think we've already told you guys <laughs> several times that it's extremely windy here today it's been blasting if you look up at the trees you can just see them the flags you can probably hear the wind there's a little food truck right here and we're tucked away at camping castillo but we're hanging out tomorrow gonna drive over to the park put my boots on get my hiking poles out and we're gonna go on a hike up that mountain the laundry got done stuff really hit the fan for us. Let me get in the van, get out of this wind, so we can tell y'all what in the heck is going on. 
but it is not good. Long story short, I will not be climbing that mountain. Don't worry, it is not his ankle. It is not anything wrong physically with anything to do with me or Kurt. But our van has just been taking an absolute beating on these Patagonia roads. And we haven't shared it with you, but over the past week or two, little things have started to break on our van. We now have a major electrical problem, right Kurt? Yeah, and I don't know how related any of them are, but well, we've been in 220 territory, so the U.S. is 110 volts for all their outlets. Here it's 220. So, usually we can plug in to get power if we're not getting enough solar. Well, we have to convert it from 220 to 110 because our system's 110. Our system for doing that has burned up, so we can't do that right now. And then our alternator, our second alternator, which also charges our battery, is not working and so yeah our electric system right now is uh really struggling we still have our solar but yeah we're yeah. struggling yeah the with the rain that comes and goes and the cloud cover that comes and goes down here we are barely getting enough solar to keep us running where we can cook and all that now to throw everything else into there our diesel hot water heater is broken. Now it's been broken for maybe a month or so. And we were just gonna deal with it when we were in a place where we could break things down and order product par parts and stuff from the States. But now on top of everything else, that's just one more thing. We just are having a really hard time. The van needs some work, but the alternator stuff and the 220 to 110 stuff, it's not stuff we can do ourselves. We have a two hour drive to the next city where we think there is an electro me electrical mechanic that might can help us. Yeah, but and it's a whole situation too where when stuff like this breaks, not only like I don't know how to fix alternators and regulators and things like that, or even for that matter, the hydronic heater, if something fails inside that component, I, I'm at a loss. It's hard to dial 1-800 numbers to get help to their customer service. And then even if we can, it's hard to get parts shipped here if you even can. So we have an uphill climb here, guys. But we always promise to share the good and the bad and everything in between. Uh, so we're going to take you all along on this journey of trying to get our van back in proper working order. First up, two hour drive to the next city. Cross your fingers that we can get to this mechanic. On our drive north to the city where we hope to get help, there are a couple of things I wanna point out. One, if you did not watch our last video, we finally made it to paved road. We are off of the full time gravel road that has just been beating on us mentally, and physically. So that is good news. It is a smooth ride right now. The other thing is, we're driving on the famous Carretera Austral, one of the most beautiful drives in the world. And even though we're in a bit of a hurry because we've got the crisis to work on the van stuff, it is not disappointing. We are following along little rocky streams through beautiful curvy mountains with green trees all over them. It is a stunning drive. We turned a corner. We're about 20 miles from the little town, the little city, and we have turned straight into some of the strongest winds we've had to drive in. Hopefully it won't last very long, but Kurt all of a sudden has his hands literally full. Yeah, the problem is it's a really strong headwind and like if it's coming across the side, well, that sucks too. But then at least you kind of know which way it's blowing you. But these, one second it's blowing you to the right, the next second it's to the left. And uh, in this big van, it just, it really makes it a handful. The only thing we can do is just slow down, really. Yeah.
starting to see more farming. The sheep are still here, but we're also starting to see more cows, actually quite a few cows, and they're growing quite a bit of hay, starting to get ready for the winter, I guess. Now, I do know that somewhere up the road, I don't know how far, but it turns into full-on cow country, ranch country. We've had people tell us about that. We have made it to the town that I'm going to call <laughs> For right now, Koyaki. Koyake. <laughs> you guys know good and well we'll pronounce it seven different ways before the video is over. <laughs> but hopefully we'll get it right by the end. So we found the electrical shop, the electrical mechanic shop. It's a very crowded part of town. So Kurt walked down there and uh, we found us a little parking place about a block away and the man said he would walk down here in about 10 minutes. So, cross y'all's fingers. So the man is very nice. He walks down here, checked a few things with Kurt, needs to do a more thorough check, told us to come back at 7.30 in the morning. We'll come early enough to hopefully be able to get a much better parking place right there. But we need to find a campground or something or come up with a plan. We need to pull a lot of stuff out of the back of the van so he can look at our electrical system back there and do some checking around. So right now we're headed to a campsite and option number one is they have some sort of shed or something we can put some of our stuff in. Option two is we figure it out in the morning. Right here. We are settled into our camp. We always like to get a corner spot if we can because it's nice for the kitties to be able to look out the sliding door and see trees. In this place, they were itching to get outside. So let's go for a walk, guys. Come on. You want to go see Gert? Hey, buddy. They're on our side of the campground. Right, Vienna? So let's start with the electrics. Let me tell you what's going on here. So, as Snow said, about, I don't know, maybe even a couple weeks ago, the alternator started acting weird. It, it started charging too much, over overcharging the batteries. Like, it was charging them too fast. It was just sending too much current to the batteries. And we really... At the time, we were moving down south into Tierra del Fuego. We were getting loads of sun, no problem. We just flipped the alternator off and didn't use it much for probably a couple weeks. And then as we started moving north, the days started getting a little shorter, cloudy. We started flipping the alternator on, only to find out that it wasn't charging and wasn't functioning properly. Long story short, we really kind of panic because we don't have a place to get that type of stuff down here in Chile or so we think we don't know we kind of been searching since then but we found a place in a city nearby with good recommendations of a guy who does electrical and so we're here we came here early because I had to take some stuff out of the back to access the batteries and anyway he said be here at 7 30 a.m i see he's just now open his gates and so hopefully he can troubleshoot this and let us know what's wrong now after my little bit of troubleshooting i think we got a situation where our bomber regulator has died so that would mean we'd need to replace that we need to find another one i don't know how or what that looks like anyway i guess we're about to find out so here's where we're at, Electricidad Automotrice. And the cool news is, well, we first off, we found this on iOverland. You can see all the batteries. He's working on this car right here. And also we had some overlanders we met at our last spot who actually said they used this guy. He was really good and really smart with electric. So we'll see, this may be technology he hasn't touched, I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, it should be interesting, guys.
and we've done the initial diagnostic. First off, the batteries aren't getting charged from the alternator, which we already knew. He crawled into the van. He said, it looks like the um, regulator is working. The alternator might be bad. Okay. And they don't have the, our, the alternator we have in Chile, and there's Can't no way get to get that. But he can rebuild it, okay. and they can rebuild it in one or two days. Okay. And the cost, approximation, 150 bucks. So, right. okay. He's gonna do diagnostics. I sent him all the paperwork from the uh, the regulator. I also sent him paperwork for the alternator, and then we'll just have to. He's gonna do a diagnostic first, and then. See if he can fix it. See if he can fix it. If not, I guess there's some kind of brushes or something in there that the carbon buildup or whatever. And so he can do that. So at the end of the day, if he can fix that in a couple of days time. It's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. He's in there studying the things right now. The guy is super nice. Yeah. He's an older guy. He does not speak a lick of English. And so it's 100% transductor, translator. And, uh, but it's Thank working you, good. <laughs> Thank you, Google. <laughs> He's a really nice guy. It's a really stressful situation, but we're parked right here in front of his shop on okay. a busy road. We're kind of parked in the grass. Can we stay and here? And he said we can stay here for, he says it's his property. So we can just stay in the van. He'll come on and work at it as needed. Fortunately, okay. most of the work that will need to be done is under the hood, not in the garage. Good. So it really won't affect us. So it looks like we're going to have a couple yeah. of editing days. All right, me and Lewis got the alternator off. This is the culprit right here. Alternators. Alternators. I'm going to part. Everything's good, but difficult to take apart stuff stuck together ah see ah yay all right Lewis is breaking out the microscope one of these connectors is oxidized so that breaks the connection yeah so we're not getting electric because this piece right here Thanks. see can you fix it um, difícil que esto esté malo. so this connector right here was cleaned up now it's time to put it back in and see if it works all right, guys, we're trying to piece this thing back together. Fingers are crossed that that's going to get it. It was just a little connector plug is all it was that we cleaned. So a lot of work just to, to clean a little thing. Hopefully that works. All right, so Lewis brought me up to this other alternator shop. And the owner here thumbed through his little parts book. He looked at the picture of our alternator. And there's the parts book. He's going upstairs. I don't know, man. This is a long shot, but it's possible, guys. We haven't given up hope yet. Uh, let's see what this is. No tiene el trigo de Dios esta weá. No, pues eso va al. La placa, la placa va a la punta de un diodo. Esta, esto aquí viene a una punta de un diodo y aquí viene al... Ahí salen los dos puntos de porta carbón. I'm being perfect honest. This is like sitting at the doctor's office. And, you know, it's been a long up up and down road roller coaster of are we going to be able to get this thing fixed are we not 
Um, the deal's sort of been dead a couple times, and I think uh, Lewis has been thinking of some workarounds, and I think at the end of the day, I think we have one that'll work. They did. That other alternator shop we went to, they did find a part that would work. They're gonna have to do some modifications. I'm gonna tell you about this later. Stressful situation once I know more. But to be honest with you, I just needed to take a little walk to get away. All right, so we got some kind of wired up deal here, I think, to jump the circuit. But we're getting back onto here to reinstall it. And I'll just show you guys real quickly. This piece right here with the red plugs coming out of it, that piece was the piece that had a bad connector and bad wiring. And they couldn't find that piece anywhere. And it's kind of a specialty piece that have to get imported. They found the one that was close, and so now we're just gonna try to make that work. Not best case scenario long term, but best case scenario for where we're at. And so I'm gonna get under here and see if we can help. So while we put this back together, I wanna to tell you a couple things about Lewis. First of all, I don't speak Lewis's language very well, and he was very kind and very patient with us. I can also tell you he's had his business here for 41 years, and he clearly has a full book of work. But he took time from his busy day to help us out. In fact, he ended up giving his whole entire day to help get us back on the road. So he's a really smart electrical engineer. He found a workaround to help get our system going. And in addition to getting it going, he left the existing system in place. So he just jumpered it and put a couple new components in. We get down the road, we get the right parts. All we gotta do is pull what he put in there, plug in the right stuff, and we're ready to go. Hats off to kind people like Lewis. Thank you so much, buddy. We really appreciate it. Fingers crossed now that this is gonna work. Just putting the finishing touches here on the bypass to bypass the bulmer. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be cranking it up any minute now to test it out. Oh, I'm nervous, so. <laughs> oh, just missed me give Luis a giant hug. I should have waited for the camera, but I couldn't because this man deserved it. Kurt, tell him what's happening. Ah, <laughs> the alternator is charging the battery. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Luis. Oh, oh, yeah. Muchas gracias. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we got power. We you might have had to rig God. it up. We may have had to rig it up. <laughs> and when we get to where we can get some parts from the States, we'll need to do a little work to it. But we have a way to charge our batteries besides just the solar, which in this weather down here just wasn't keeping up. Luis is a miracle worker. If you're thinking about this journey, we're in the town of uh, Coyhaique. I don't know if that's how you say it, in Southern Chile on the Carretera Austral. And if you're coming through and you've beat the heck out of your vehicle too, and you need anything done, Luis is your man. This is the shop. He is absolutely a legend and stopped what he was doing to help get us back on the road. And now hopefully we can get our baby a bath. Oh guys, this is a huge relief. All right, Kurt is putting our house back together. Working through it, he I says. Put the puzzle together back here. <laughs> Every inch of space in this garage is used. We all know Kurt's a good puzzle putter together. He got everything back in this garage. Now we got to back out of here, which is going to be tricky. And then got to find somewhere to sleep for tonight. It is too late to get too far away from here, but street parking tonight it is, right Kurt? Street parking with power. <laughs> with power. We are at our campsite. It's a nice little street that's quiet with trees. And all the lights on. All the lights are on. Kurt's gonna whip us up some dinner. Oh, 
What a relief, guys. What a relief. Alright, what'd you come up with? Chicken, vegetables, and quinoa. Smells delicious. Broccoli, zucchini, onions, some herbs, some carrots, some peppers. No salt. Zero salt. Oh, and I, I tried something new. I put a little splash of wine in there to give it a new little flavor. We'll see how yeah. that works out. All right, guys. It's been a long day. We're going to wind it down. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!